Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel. My name is Veleleni Nkosi. Today I will be looking at the functions of a nephron. So I will discuss how the nephrons perform its functions of removing waste substances in the blood. So like always, all our videos, we start with the examination guideline. So this is the guideline. It's for grade 11. Uh, we are on excretion in human so falls under paper one which carries 32 marks so now we are on urinary system and uh, last video we discussed the structure of the nephron and then in this video we will discuss the functioning of the nephron so uh, all these functions here the ultra filtration reabsorption tubular excretion ph control and the formation of urine so this is the content that we will be discussing in this video so without wasting more time let's get to it so first of all let us look the ultra filtration so the ultra filtration another name is a glomerular filtration because it takes place in the glomerulus of the nephron so uh, what is the glomerular filtration so glomerular filtration takes place in the malthusian body of a nephron so uh, we discussed a uh, malthusian body in a previous video so this is the uh, simple structure of a malthusian body this outer part here it's a bowman's capsule and then this uh, blood capillary here it's called the glomerulus so this glomerulus is connected by two a uh, tree or two uh, vessels which is a uh, Afferent atrul and the efferent atrul. So, this is the Malthusian body. So, both useful and the waste substance are filtered through into the capsule. So, what happened here due to the different in diameter of the efferent atrul and the efferent atrul, this creates a pressure inside glomerulus. So, as this blood enters the glomerulus. They enter in a large volume and then they live in a small volume due to the small diameter. On a, I mean, the small diameter of the efferent atrul. And then, as this creates a pressure, the, the small substances are forced to pass through the layers here. And then, this is what we call the ultra filtration. So, these substances that are passing here are useful substance and they're wasteful substance so this one is not selective it only take the small substances so now let's look at the useful substances and the waste substances so i will start with the useful substances and the first it's a glucose so glucose due to the its nature of being small compound then is able to pass through the layers here and then Another thing, it's an amino acid. So we know that amino acid, it's a broken down of proteins. So it's also able to pass through here. And then another thing, it's a, are the vitamins. Vitamins are also small substances. And then minerals. So some mel minerals are able to pass here. And then the last thing, it's water. So like water also passing here and the wasteful substances that are passing or are filtered here it's a urea so urea is passing through and then another last thing it's a uric acid so these are some of the substances that are passing through due to the pressure that is formed by the afferent atrul and the efferent atrul so these substances as they pass into the Bowman's capsule. We call them the filtrate or the glomerular filtrate. So uh, we call them filtrate. So this is the name and you might be asked in a biological term. So you must know that this uh, substances when they pass here, they are called filtrate. So there are other substances that are large, which are not able to pass through where the most common one that are known are the blood cells. So blood, there's no way that blood is will is able to pass through this small piece. And then protein, it's also large. So 
is not able to pass through. So blood cell and the protein, they will just get in here and then leave in efferent and through. So now let's look at the tubular reabsorption. So what is the tubular reabsorption? Tubular reabsorption takes place in the proximal convoluted tubule. So like the time we discussed the structure of a nephrod, I showed you the proximal convoluted tubule. So the, this is the proximal convoluted tubule after the filtrate has entered the Bowman's capsule. So they go to the PCT. So PCT stands for Proxima Convoluted Tubal. So this tubular reabsorption takes place in the PCD. So what happened? This uh, reabsorption, it involves the reabsorption of important substances that ended up in the glomerular filtrate. So like in a previous function, I told you that the, the substances that are passing here are not selective. So wasteful and useful they are passing through this reabsorption it's where the imported sub substances are felt uh, reabsorbed back to the blood so they will move from the pcd to the blood and uh, the substance are transported to the capillary by the active transport so we learned about the active transport in grade 10 so we know that the active transport need energy for it to take place so the substances that are important they will move out of this filtrate into the blood capillary blood capillary around it, the tubules so whatever that is leaving the tubules will get into the blood capillary so those substances that are uh, reabsorbed back is glucose Amino acids, vitamins, minerals, and water. So a large amount of water is reabsorbed back to the blood capillary in the proximal convoluted tubule. So these are the substances that are reabsorbed. And then now let you get tubular excretion or the tubular secretion. So Tubular secretion involves the removal of unnecessary substances from the blood capillary into the tubular filtrate in the distal convoluted tubule. So this one, it normally takes place in the distal convoluted tubule. So this is the distal convoluted tubule. That is where the unnecessary products that are in the blood vessels they leave the blood vessel and then enter the or join the filtrate. So they will, uh, as the filtrate is moving through the loop of hangel and then enters the DCT. So the substances that are in the blood which are not necessary, so they will be excreted back to the filtrate. So that process is called the tubular excretion. So what are those substances it's a hydrogen ion so hydrogen ion is also important in controlling the ph of the blood so we will discuss about it in a moment so this substance is the hydrogen ion and then potassium ions retinine bicarbonate ions so both hydrogen ion and the bicarbonate ions are responsible for controlling the pH of the blood. So these are the substances that are not necessarily, and then they are reabsorbed back or they are uh, secreted back into the tubules. They are taken out of the blood capillaries. So this is the information. And then now let us look at the blood pH control or the homeostasis of the blood pH. So Another thing, uh, import, another important thing about the nephron, so the nephron plays a crucial role in maintaining the body acid-base balance. So acid-base balance is a pH balance. So how does this nephron 
control this though this involved the regulation of concentration of hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions in the blood so this nephron control the amount of hydrogen ions and the bicarbonate ions so what happened is the nephron can reabsorb bicarbonate ion to increase blood ph or reduce acidity if the blood are becoming more acids and then what happened the nephron will reabsorb bicarbonate ions so we, we must remember that the bicarbonate ion it's a base so if uh, the blood are filled with a base so that is mean this becomes a less acidic so this is how the blood the the, the nephron decreases the acidity of the of the blood and then another thing the nephron will secrete hydrogen ions to decrease blood ph or increase acidity so we know that the, the hydrogen ions if they are secreted in the blood so this blood becomes more acid so this is how the nephron makes sure that ph of the blood is up to standard because some enzymes work in a very good ph so nephron makes must make sure that the ph of the blood it's up to standard so now let us look at the formation of urine so now we will look how urine is formed the filter that enters collecting duct is known as urine. So after everything has filtered here, uh, all the processes of that we talked about, what is next? And then as this filter enters the collecting duct, this is the collecting duct. So this filter now we call it a urine. So urine consists of urea, excess water, and a salt. All useful substances are reabsorbed back into the blood capillaries. So all the useful substances uh, are reabsorbed back to the blood capillary. And then as the filter enters this collecting duct, now we call it a urine. So collecting duct carry urine into the renal pelvis from where it is passes to the urate. So like this tube here uh, joins the renal pelvis and then the renal pelvis take the urine to the ureta and then from the ureta to the urinary bladder so as the urine enters the urinary bladder that is where we feel like uh, we want to pee so this is how the urine is formed in the nephron so if you have watched this video to this far Thank you very much. Please subscribe to our channel. So, if you're studying, good luck with your studies. Thank you very much. God bless you.